Amphion has released a new zero-shot voice cloning tool called Vivo. What is zero-shot voice cloning? Well, it means that you don't have to train a model for a voice. You just provide a single sample of audio and it mimics the voice almost instantly. And not only is it capable of cloning a voice, it is also capable of cloning an accent. Actually, it's more than an accent. They call it style transfer. And it's an attempt to pick up on the general energy of the speaker. Like if there's a lot of excitement or if they're talking very calmly. As a matter of fact, I'm speaking the way I'm speaking right now because I took audio clips from Morpheus in the red pill scene of The Matrix. And what you're hearing right now is Vivo converting my voice into Morpheus based on 30 seconds of Morpheus sitting in his comfy chair. Now, is this a perfect imitation? No, not by a long shot. And is this a replacement for a well-trained RVC model? Again, no, but for what it is, it is very fun because all you need is a small sample and you're off and running very quickly. So let me show you a few more examples of what Vivo can do. I've gone ahead and changed my voice to Jeff Bridges just for the fun of it. I'm going to be doing that a lot throughout the video so that I can demonstrate the tool better. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of style imitation. Once upon a time, there lived a merciless hunter in the heart of a forest. O oh, life of this our spring, why fades the lotus of the water? Why fade these children of the spring? Once upon a time, there lived a merciless hunter in the heart of a forest. Now, what this is supposed to be is a style imitation of the American male uh, from the Hindi female, and the style transfer is not trying to copy the male's voice, but just his inflection. So pretty interesting considering it's all based off of like eight second clips, but enough demos from the website, you could look at all those yourself. Let's try this out in the wild. I wanna do a voice and accent swap. Let's see what it can do. Your name? A wizard is never late, Rudy Baggins. Nice here, early. He arrives precisely when he means to. To tell you the truth, Bebo's been a bit odd lately. I mean, more than usual. He's taken the locking himself in his study. He spends hours and hours poring over old maps when he thinks of not looking. All right, honestly, that was a bit rough, but it was worth a shot, right? It has its limitations for sure, but it's not going to stop me from having some fun with it. All right, now, let's get down to brass tacks. You want to know how to run this thing. Let's start by looking at the Amphion repo. It's a large repository, and we have to find the section on Vivo. Now, here's a quirk about Amphion. It's actually a lot of different projects, and Vivo is just one of them. So you've got to follow the install instructions for Vivo specifically. Fair warning, you've got to know how to use a Python virtual environment. It's not that hard. You just have to follow the install instructions. But for Windows users, there's the eSpeak dependency. And it's my understanding that it can be a little bit of a pain. So just watch out for that. Now, there's one small problem with the demos in the Amphion repo. It's that they're not very useful. You have to edit the Python files to change the audio input. I couldn't stand that, so I made my own GUI. Now, it's not much, but it gets the job done for me anyway. And you can run it too. It's on GitHub chameleon-ai slash vivo. Now, there's nothing fancy going on. I just copy-pasted from the examples and made a GUI so that I could change some of the values. At some point, somebody will make something better, but it's what I've got to work with for now. It's very easy to install, just follow the instructions. But please, if you have any issues, try getting the main Amphion repo to work first. I didn't add anything that should cause a problem. And I know now the next question. Knowing you, 
being the interviewer that you are, digging in deep all the time, you will say now, how much VRAM does it use? More VRAM is used the longer the reference audio is. If your reference audio is about one minute, then it will use about 12 gigabytes of VRAM. However, perhaps counterintuitively, longer does not mean better. And the ideal length for a clip is between 15 and 45 seconds. So if you keep the clips short, you can keep it under eight gigabytes, but more realistically, it uses about nine to 10 gigabytes for something around 30 seconds. It's also worth noting that if you're using my GUI, it doesn't really like to free memory. So if you switch around the reference audio a lot, it will creep up on you and max out. Unfortunately, with the examples that I had to work with, I didn't see a good way of doing memory management. So if your VRAM maxes out, you may have to close and open the application. Oh, and there's one more elephant in the room to address, and that's the text-to-speech feature. You see, it doesn't really work. Well, it works in the sense that it doesn't crash, but it doesn't really output anything useful. Feel free to try it out for yourself, see what you can do with it, but don't expect much. I suspect that it has to do with a lot of settings that are deeper in the code than I want to dive, but hopefully someday it'll get fixed uh, along with several other quirks. Really, this is a very experimental project. It's in the beginning stages, so it can only get better from here. I, for one, am looking forward to whatever Amphion has got coming next. But that's all I've got for you today. Mess around with Vivo. Remember to keep the clips to like 30 seconds and have a nice day.